So since I am close to getting the 10 10 gallon vivariums done, I've decided to start actively breeding crested geckos again. I have a bunch of crested geckos, but none of them are currently in breeding pairs because it's just a lot to take care of the babies when they're all in tubs and I have to clean all the tubs very frequently and do all of that. But once I have the 10, 10 gallon vivariums, I will be able to keep the babies much more smoothly, especially during the school year when I'll be mainly focusing on college. So I think it's reasonable for me to put males and females back together. And I wanna do, I wanna switch it up a little bit. I wanna do some different things. So I wanna show in this enclosure, I have Linus. He is a lone male currently, and he is pretty feisty. Whenever I go to get him out, he generally tries to bite me because he is, uh, he would like to mate. So when he was in with a female or two females, he never did this. He was never a gecko that, that would bite me or do anything like that. But since he's been alone and unable to mate, it's been kind of a problem. And right now he's not because I'm talking about it and he wouldn't want to be able to show people, but he's a really pr pretty, almost full pinstripe. He's not a full pinstripe. He has uh, a couple breaks in it, but he is very close. And I had him and Teddy together. Teddy is a, another crust gecko that is a patternless, and I'll get to her. But I had them together, and they produced they produced tons and tons of babies, the most out of out of any of them. But I am not planning on putting them back together because, as you can see, he has tons of Dalmatian. He has this really cool pinstripe going on. And what I want to do is I want to mix that with a kind of bicolor female that I have that's really dark. And my hope there is to get a, a like some really dark uh, crusty geckos that have light uh, pinstripes down the back. That's kind of the goal. So in this enclosure here beside his, I have, I'm going to put him back in his. I have Goliad. Goliad's that bicolor that I was talking about. She's super dark, especially when she's fired up or kind of like if she's sitting somewhere in like the area that the light's touching her, it's super dark. And I produced her. Unfortunately, both of her parents have passed away since, so I can no longer produce crest geckos that are as dark as her, and I sold all the other ones. So I'm hoping if I mate her with Linus, I could get some really cool combinations and I can start working on more dark crest geckos. That's kind of my goal. I've been holding some crest geckos back that I want to raise up and just get really, really dark ones that maybe have pretty backs or maybe not. But currently, these are two adults that I can add together. So I just kind of want to see what their babies might turn out to be like. Now I'm going to be adding her into his enclosure because his enclosure is kind of built for breeding. It has three pots in the background that are really big, so it'd be easy for me to dig eggs out of. And then it also has a tub in the bottom that has a bunch of sphagnum moss in it that's ready to breed. I've just never put a female in there. This tank that she is in currently is really bad for breeding because the isopods pretty much always eat the eggs. Eggs almost never hatch in this enclosure. I've only had a couple babies hatch out of it. And they're really hard to find because there's tons of pots in the background and there's a bunch of soil on the bottom and they can lay it anywhere in there. So she might be considered a patternless, I don't know, but she is extremely huge and extremely pretty. She is the biggest gecko I have. She looks like she's super wide, but she's also really long. She's just that massive. And in my experience, Linus is a pretty docile breeder. And in my experience with her, because I have bred her before, she kind of will just get beaten up, even though she's so massive, if the, the breeders, the, the male is kind of mean. But luckily, I don't, I don't really have any mean males. They all seem to be pretty good. So it'll be the first time with her and Linus together, so I'm interested to see how well they do. But I'm going to put her in. You can see the size difference if I get out Linus. There's a huge size difference, but since she is a female and he is a male, I'm not overly worried about it. But 
she should produce some absolutely massive babies because her eggs should be really big. And then if they incubate for, you know, long enough, I think that's why she's so big is just that our egg incubated for so long. Because if you get bigger babies to hatch out, they might become bigger geckos. But I'm going to take his food out and I'm going to put in her food because I just gave them food yesterday. So it's still fresh, but I want to make sure that she has the opportunity to eat. So this enclosure, I think that they're in, it's newer. This one right here is newer than these three. So I think it might finally be ready to have two geckos and they'll all have places to hide and everything. So next up, I'm going to take Minerva from this tank and add her into Goliad's old tank because I won't be breeding Minerva. Minerva is one of Linus and Teddy's babies. She's dark, she looks really cool, but I currently don't have a male to breed her with. So I'm just gonna put her in here until I eventually have a male, I either raise one up or I acquire one some way through trading or something. So I need to catch her out of here. Currently in here, there's Teddy, which is her mom. Then there's Minerva, which is the daughter. And then there's a small crest gecko named Finn, who was born in this tank. And I didn't catch him until maybe a couple weeks after he was born. So I decided kind of as an experiment just to leave him in with these two adult females that he'd been, you know, living and growing in for a couple weeks already. And just kind of see how it turns out. And they have done really, the three of them have done really well together. I've had no problems with him. He does completely fine in this bioactive 55 gallon ever since he hatched. So it's kind of crazy, but I'm going to go ahead and move him and Minerva into this tank and they should do good in there. And then I, I'll leave Teddy in here and I'll move in Forest. So here we have Minerva. Currently she is completely fired down. So normally she gets really dark on the sides and I don't think she has really any or much of any Dalmatian in her, not very much. Uh, she kind of has some floppy tail, unfortunately, which I don't, I don't really know what to do about that because there's per plenty of horizontal surfaces for her to be on in the enclosure that she's been in, but she seems to like to hang on the side for some reason. It's not really, it's not really something that I can do much about. There's already tons of calcium and everything she needs in her diet. So I'm not really sure what it's about, but here she is. And then I'll get out Finn once I find him because he's a little bit smaller and I'll show you him. So here's Finn. You can see he's just a juvenile. He's really small, but he's been living in with these adult females completely fine. He also kind of has some, some interesting dark patterns. He's not something super special, not a gecko that maybe I'd keep normally or raise up normally, but because of this kind of experiment, I want to keep him and, and see where it goes. If he is a male, then ultimately I'll probably end up getting rid of him. But if it ends up being a female, then I might just keep him in with Minerva or something. I'm not really sure, but he has some cool colorations. I think he's really pretty. And he's basically grown up wild and has almost zero handling. I only get him out to weigh him. But even with, with the geckos that I normally raise up, raise up, I at least interact with them as I clean their enclosures frequently. But with him, I've had none of that. So generally getting him out of the tank's pretty wild. And he kind of runs everywhere. But he's super pretty, I think. And right Really fired up. He just jumped on the ground. I would even say, I think that he's growing faster in the 55 gallons. I don't know if he's eating insects or what he eats exactly, but he seems to do really well and grow really well in the, the really massive enclosure. So here is Teddy. She is fired down right now, but she's a patternless. And maybe she has a bit of reverse pinstripe just kind of the dark colors going down the stripes there. But she's basically patternless, and I think she's really cool. She's uh, probably one of my friendliest geckos, and I've had her for a really, really long time. And I'm interested to see 
what it would be like if I mated her and Forest, which is another patternless gecko that I have that only has down. He does have Dalmatian. She doesn't. He does. I think it might be really interesting to mate the two of them and, and kind of see where it goes because, again, I've never put them together. So, like I said, I'm trying to switch it up from what I've done in the past. So, her tank has done pretty well as a breeding tank. So, I'm going to move Forest in with her. And then I'm going to get Pamela, who was in the 15 gallon that was where this 20 gallon now is. And she's out in the living room right now. I want to move her back into my room because, in general, it stays warmer in my room. And I want to put her in the tank that Forest is currently in because that's actually the tank that she came with when she was given to me. So, I kind of want her to go back to you know, what she was, she was used to then, and she'll be in something bigger, you know, twice as big as a 15 gallon, which should be better for her. Then I'm going to bring the three geckos that I have out there that are juveniles, and I'm going to put them in this new 20 gallon. I have Matthew, the gargoyle gecko, who is a juvenile, and then I have two crested geckos. I think they're both either from Teddy and Linus, or from Minerva and Forest. Because Minerva and Teddy were kept together after they had been mated with, I don't really know who the eggs came from for like a, a, a bunch of the, the, any eggs that just came from retained sperm from them. But since then, they've kind of stopped and I've stopped getting babies from their, their retained sperm. So I think it's a good time to put them, to put them in with new mates and... I won't have to worry about the babies not being from whoever they're going to mate with now. But I have two that I'm holding back and kind of raising because they're really dark in color. I think they're super pretty. And I will put all three of those geckos because they're all juveniles and they're not yet mature. I can put them all together in this 20 gallon, which is a